You ever had the situation where you want to go scuba diving and no one else does? Or you want to take your camera, take photos, take video, have no one else around you? Well, solo diving might be for you. Stick around, learn all about self-reliant diving. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Hi guys, welcome to Everything Scuba. I'm Lyle. If you're a first time viewer to our channel, welcome. Uh, we are a channel dedicated to talking about everything about scuba diving, providing educational and entertainment content that uh, we hope will make you a better diver. So if you love to scuba dive, dive into everything scuba, click that subscribe button down below. We'd love to have you join us. If you're already a subscriber, we appreciate all the support that you guys give our channel. Uh, last week, we talked about the dangers and the misconceptions associated with solo diving. Uh, if you missed that video, link will be dropped up above, but it's a little bit of a controversial area within the uh, realms of recreational diving. Uh, we talked about the pitfalls and uh, the uh, misconceptions that could occur uh, when it comes to that type of diving. We also talked about the difference between diving alone versus being a self-reliant solo diver. Uh, self-reliant uh, divers carry redundant uh, gear with them that will provide them hopefully the safety mechanisms that we need to have. As we described, scuba diving has some inherent risks to it. By diving alone, you're assuming a little bit of a greater burden. And so we wanna make sure that we have some built-in systems that will allow us to always fulfill our primary objective, which we outlined last week, which is to return safely from every dive. Today, we're gonna to talk about the must-have gear that you need to be a safe solo diver. Must-have here is underlined. It doesn't mean it would be nice to have, it would be cool to have. It means this is essential gear that you need to carry with you on every dive to make sure that you are a safe solo diver. And so we're gonna walk you through step by step the different redundant systems that we ask you to carry during a solo dive. First off, we are going to talk a little bit about the PADI Self-Reliant class. If you're a diver that's interested in pursuing a solo diving certification, PADI offers the Self-Reliant Certification class. That is a class where you work in close association with an experienced instructor who will walk you step by step through that process. Uh, that includes the theory and knowledge review for dive planning, gas management, uh, in order to safely execute a dive by yourself. It includes the gear and the gear setup. How do we wear that underwater and uh, be safe with that? And then lastly, performing this necessary skills with that instructor. It includes classroom session. It also includes three separate dives. The third dive typically you will dive solo, you'll still perform skills. That's something to work with your uh, instructor on exactly what they would have you do in that situation. But there are specific requirements that we have for that class. Let me walk you through them. Number one, you need to be at least 18 years of age. Number two, you need to have at least 100 log dives that you can show to your instructor when you show up for the class that day. Number three, you need to be at least an advanced open water diver or have a qualification from another certifying agency that is equivalent to that. And lastly, just like I said, you have to fulfill the requirements within the class. This is something that I, as an instructor, take very seriously. Uh, we're not just gonna hand out a card to you if we feel that you don't meet the standards uh, that we require. On top of the PADI requirements to begin that class, there are other certifications that I personally believe would be very beneficial to have under your belt before you start a solo diving class. The first of which would be underwater navigation. Uh, that is a certification that will teach you not only to appropriately use uh, a compass and confidently 
uh, navigate underwater. It teaches how to use natural navigation resources underwater. Uh, and so during the solo dive, you're going to be put through your paces in terms of underwater navigation and proving to that instructor that you can get from point A to point B and back again and exit the water safely. So underwater navigation, look into it. The second and the third certification that I would look at prior to taking on a solo diving class would be nitrox or enriched air. I, as a solo diver, would routinely use nitrox. It gives me more bottom time, but it gives me a little bit more insight into partial pressure calculations and dive planning. Deep diving, you performed a single deep dive during your advanced open water class, and that gives you some information in terms of uh, diving that deeply. However, finishing that certification will definitely give you more insight into dive uh, planning and also gas management both of which we will go into a lot more detail on as a solo diver, really critical uh, information. We have performed a variety of deep dives on this uh, channel previously. Click that link up above and go check those out. The final certification that I would strongly, strongly encourage anyone pursuing a solo diving certification is to look at Rescue Diver. Probably one of the most physically and mentally challenging classes that you will take as a diver, but provides so much information in terms of self-rescue, situational awareness, being aware of your surroundings, and uh, being able to plan for potential accidents that may occur. Back to must-have read essential gear to become a solo diver. First up, we're gonna take a look at redundant gas systems. There's a variety of ways that we can take redundant gas under the water with us, and we're gonna go visit uh, my good friend, Mark Lindsay, course director, owner of Sweet Bottom Dive Center down on St. Croix in the US Virgin Islands, and Mark is gonna walk us through each potential option that we can use as divers underwater for redundant gas. Thank you, Lyle. And so we have several options here. The first option is back mount doubles. And if you're gonna use back mount doubles, you need to make sure you have an isolator valve and a manifold. Uh, because if you do have a problem with one tank, you wanna be able to isolate that tank and then go ahead and uh, just supply gas from the second tank. Second option over here, Lyle, is a uh, standard aluminum 80 set up in side mount. And so what you see here is you see that it has a stage kit on it already. Uh, the only thing I would probably add to this cylinder here is I would add a couple of retention bands just to help keep my hoses nice and neat and streamlined. Another option you can use here, this is an aluminum 40 cubic foot stage bottle. And so this is very popular with technical divers. This is typically where they'll have their 50% uh, oxygen mix or their 100% oxygen mix. But you could certainly use a setup like this for your self-reliant diving also. You have a stage kit, have a couple of retention bands, and uh, all you would need is a stage regulator then. The two options we're gonna use for this class is this is an aluminum 30 cubic foot tank. It's set up here with a stage kit and you can see it's got a couple of retention bands already. Um, this particular one has a uh, pro valve on it. And so what we're gonna do to prepare this is we're gonna take the DIN insert out of the pro valve. And then what we can do is we can utilize one of our stage regulators. And a lot of companies sell stage regulators. This happens to be from DiveRight. Um, we love DiveRight. We do a lot of business with DiveRight. And it comes with a first stage and a standard 40 inch MyFlex hose in a second stage. And then you'll also notice it has a short six inch high pressure hose uh, for the submersible pressure gauge. And so when we go to head uh, to prepare this, all we're gonna do is just <clears throat> screw the regulator in. Mm -hmm. 
And so you guys, uh, previously we uh, reviewed the different types of uh, cylinder valves and uh, we start with yoke primarily in the U.S., but uh, this is a different s s type of uh, valve. This is the DIN valve that Mark's using today. And and the why, reason, why, why, did, why did they use DIN versus yoke, Mark? Yeah, so that's a real good question, Lyle. And the reason that we like to use DIN on things like this is, first of all, it's not as cumbersome. It's not sticking out this far. Uh, and it gives you a much more streamlined um, appearance to it, and so it's not catching on things. Now what I'm going to do with this uh, hose here, is I'm going to just tuck the hose underneath retention bands. And what we're going to do is create a nice neat little package here. Then what we can do is we can pull the mouthpiece right in so it's being held like that. Now in this particular one, I also have a little clip. Oh, nope, clip's on the other one. So I'll just transfer that clip, that's not a problem. And Dive Right makes this little elastic band here too, so this is really nice. And really just a couple of dollars for this elastic band. But the whole idea of what it does is it provides a breakaway uh, attachment for a clip. And so all I'm going to do here is just I'll feed it through here first. Just the swivel on the snap bolt. And then just bring it right through. And there we have our clip. Nice. That's pretty, pretty, pretty fast compared to tying it in with uh, some line. Absolutely. And you know what? We really don't like to tie these in with line either because if you're going to be doing side mount diving or if you're going to be doing technical diving, you want these to be able to break away. And so one of the tricks that we've done in the past before we had this nice elastic band is we would go ahead and we would use just an O-ring and fold it in half and tie the O-ring on. And then that way if we needed to break, uh, break away that snap bolt, it was no big deal, just a quick yank, and you could break that O-ring. Okay, so this is our 30 cubic foot cylinder all set up, and you can see it's ready to be staged now. So we can go ahead and carry that in side mount fashion on our BCD harness. Okay, this is kind of a unique setup though today, Lyle, and this is a uh, 19 cubic foot aluminum cylinder. And with this particular cylinder, we have a very unique um, holder for it. And this is set up so that you can go ahead and attach that to your main cylinder on your BCD. Now this is made by Highland uh, and sold by XS Scuba, but there are several companies that make a, a similar type of cylinder holder. Um, this would be commonly used with um, like the public safety divers. And so you'll see that a lot with public safety divers where they'll have their aluminum 80 and then they'll have this attached to the side of the aluminum 80. All right, so it's, it's back mounted as opposed to uh, slung on the side like uh, most Correct. State, state bottles would be. Correct. And you can see again, it's a pro valve. So we can take the DIN insert out and then we can use a DIN type stage regulator on it. Perfect. So again, it keeps it nice and streamlined. One of the other options that I might consider with something like this is I may forego the six inch uh, high pressure hose here and I might just put a button gauge right on this first stage. Because in this particular configuration, you're not gonna be able to look back and look at that air pressure anyway. Once this is on, this is on. Okay. And so strictly redundant air source. You're not using it as part of your dive plan. This is your Back up to your backup to your backup. If you have an emergency, it's your fail safe. Well, perfect. So, guys, that's a that's a nice overview of the uh, options available to divers for redundant gas uh, during a dive. Uh, later today, uh, Jeff with Triton's Drum and I are going to be uh, once again under the tutelage of, of Mark. And uh, we're going to gear up and we're going to show you what we look like geared up. And we're going to talk a little bit about all the redundant systems that we're going to use. So Excellent. thank you, Mark.
You're welcome, Lyle. Hey, thanks to Mark for that awesome review of the various ways that we can take redundant gas with us on a solo dive. Just a quick heads up though, guys, if you wanted to use back doubles or side mount doubles, uh, you need to be certified in those particular systems to be able to use them in this class. Things like a stage tank, the pony bottle, uh, that's all part of the education of the Patty Self-Reliant class, so uh, you don't have to be specifically certified in those. So the number one piece of must-have gear that you need to have is a redundant breathable gas system. In this uh, class we're going to use air, it could be nitrox, but you need to have breathable gas as a secondary redundant system. That's not the only must-have or essential piece of equipment and gear that you need to have. So next up, I want you to click the link up above and let's check out all the other things that we need to take with us to be a solo diver. Thank you.